Welcome back to Happily Home Cooking. Today I'm making my home style meatballs with creamy mushroom sauce. First I'm going to share with you my recipe for beef meatballs with parmesan cheese and fresh breadcrumbs. They're super easy to make and really versatile. They go great in this recipe as well as spaghetti and meatballs. Next I'll show you how I make this creamy mushroom gravy sauce. Then we'll simmer it all together and serve it on top of some egg noodles. We're going to work lots of Parmesan cheese into every layer of this dish for a delicious, comforting, home-style meal. If this sounds good to you, make sure you are subscribed to our channel and then stick around and I'll show you how we make our delicious home-style meatballs with a creamy mushroom sauce. First thing we'll do is get our fresh breadcrumbs ready. Just grab three ounces of any kind of bread you have left lying around. I'm using sweet rolls today, which incidentally are one ounce each, so I'll be using three sweet rolls. Just pop them into the food processor and we'll turn that on low for about 20 seconds. Pretty much any kind of bread will work for this. I often use sourdough bread or even plain white bread. If you try this out, let me know down in the comments what kind of bread you used and how you liked it. And if you don't have a food processor or you just don't feel like getting it out, you can easily tear up the bread by hand. It just takes a bit longer. And there we are, just 20 seconds, and we have beautiful fresh breadcrumbs for our meatballs. Now we'll dump our fresh breadcrumbs into a large bowl, and to that we'll add our meatball seasonings. We'll use one teaspoon of sea salt, one teaspoon instant minced onion, a half a teaspoon of granulated onion, a quarter teaspoon of dried basil, and a quarter teaspoon of dried oregano. And if you didn't catch all that, don't worry, I will have all of the ingredients in the description below. We're also adding a tablespoon of dried parsley, a teaspoon of minced garlic, and a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese. I'll give that a quick stir to mix in all those different seasonings. And then we'll add in our wet ingredients. We'll add a quarter cup of milk, and one egg. And we'll mix that all together until it's well combined and all of our breadcrumbs are moist. Okay. So for our meat, I'm going to be using one and three quarter pounds of ground beef. Like most of my recipes, this is very forgiving. You can use a pound and a half of ground beef if that's what you have. My package just happens to be one and three quarter pounds, so that's what I use. These meatballs are also really delicious for spaghetti and meatballs. And sometimes when I do that, I will substitute some of the ground beef for some pork sausage. When I do, I'll use about one pound of ground beef plus a half a pound of the pork sausage. And when using the sausage, I eliminate the salt from the seasonings. Don't want them to be too salty. So any way you do them, this is a great homestyle meatball recipe that'll work in lots of different things. I'd love to hear how you make them or what else you use them in. So as you can see, I am just mixing this all together by hand to incorporate all of those breadcrumbs and seasonings into our meat. And now we're ready for the next stage, balling up our meat. I like to use a cookie scoop for this part. It just helps to make sure that all of our meatballs are even in size. And this is a one and a half tablespoon cookie scoop that I'm using, but of course you can make these larger or smaller if you like. 
And of course, you don't have to use a cookie scoop for this. You can just eyeball it, do it however you like. This just makes me feel better. Something kind of satisfying about having them all evenly sized. Plus, they cook more evenly. I would also note that I like to line my cookie sheet with parchment paper. That way, nothing's going to be sticking to our pan and it's going to make for even easier cleanup. But it's definitely not a must. If you don't have parchment paper, it's totally okay. You can do these directly on your cookie sheet or you can even bake them on a wire rack if you have one. And then I like to come back and give each one just a quick little roll in my hands to get all those little bits of meat that are sticking off the edges all formed into a more uniform ball. And since these are not cookies, they're not going to be spreading, so we don't have to space them real far apart, but you do want to place them so that they aren't touching. And there they are, our meatballs are ready to bake. This recipe has made about two dozen meatballs of this size. We'll be baking them at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes. I definitely suggest you taste one of these fresh out of the oven without any sauce or anything. They are super delicious. And now we'll prepare our easy creamy mushroom sauce. We'll thickly slice 8 ounces of mushrooms. You can use any kind of mushroom that you enjoy here. I'm just using white mushrooms today. I'll often use cremini's. Let me know in the comments if you use something else. Then in a large deep skillet, we're going to melt a tablespoon or two of butter over a medium high heat. We'll add in our mushrooms. Season them with some salt and pepper. And then we'll saute these, stirring them frequently until they've cooked down a bit and they've released some of their liquid. And now we're ready for the rest of our gravy ingredients. Some days I like to do everything from scratch, and some days I like a quick cheat. Today we're going to be using two packages of McCormick Brown Gravy Mix. This is going to give our sauce a boost of flavor as well as texture. We'll get that all stirred in to coat our mushrooms. And then we're going to gradually add in three cups of water. Start with just a little bit, get that all stirred into the mushrooms to start to dissolve our gravy mix, and then gradually add in the rest. Now, if we were just making straight gravy to have over mashed potatoes or something, the packages would call for two cups of water for these two packages of gravy mix, but we're thinning it out a bit for our sauce. So that's why we're using the three cups of water. And once we add in the rest of our ingredients, our gravy is going to be transformed into a delicious, comforting sauce. Once our water is all incorporated, we'll be bringing this up to a boil and we'll cook and stir it for about a minute or so or until it begins to slightly thicken. Then we'll turn our heat down to medium low to add the rest of our ingredients. We'll add a half a cup of sour cream,
a teaspoon of Dijon mustard, and a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese. And we'll stir this all in to completely incorporate the sour cream and Parmesan cheese. This will take a few minutes of stirring to really break down that sour cream all the way. So don't be afraid to be a little bit vigorous with it. Once that's all incorporated, give it a taste and see if you want to add any salt or pepper. I find this to be plenty salty already, but I do like to season it with a little extra pepper to our taste. And now our sauce is done, so we are going to add those delicious homestyle meatballs that we made right into our mushroom sauce. This dish to me is very reminiscent of a stroganoff or the Swedish meatballs that I remember my grandmother making when I was a child. Not at all traditional Swedish meatballs, but it definitely hits that same note in my memory. And then we'll cover this with a lid and let it gently simmer until it's completely heated through if those meatballs have cooled down or until you're ready to serve it. This can sit and at a low simmer for several hours until you're ready to serve. I like to serve it over some egg noodles, to which I've added a little bit of butter, salt and pepper, and of course, more Parmesan cheese. Our meatballs are moist and tender, and paired with that mushroom gravy sauce, it's oh so comforting without being too rich or heavy. Pair it with a side salad, and dinner is served. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today while we made our homestyle meatballs with creamy mushroom sauce. If you enjoy this recipe, please hit the like button and make sure you are subscribed to our channel with that notification button turned on so that you'll be notified when we upload our next family favorite recipe. Have a wonderful day and happy home cooking.